The Necrobloom. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a plant. If you control seven or more lands with different names, make a 2-2 zombie instead. Land cards in your graveyard have dredge too. Hmm. A mix between Field of the Dead and Dakmore Salvage. Giving your lands dredge is pretty cool. Three out of five. It's fine. I like that you get tokens with the lands. I think being able to make this into a zombie theme deck and the lands deck makes it really unique to brew, so I'll give this four out of five. Look how sad he is. He just wants to make some friends. He's making other plant friends when you give him lands. Clearly five out of five. We gotta support our sad boys. Nadu, winged wisdom. Ugh, what doesn't this thing do? And it's flying, raises the price of Shuko, and lets you do the Simic thing twice per turn per creature when they're targeted with a spell or ability. What a powerful effect from the command zone. If you combine this with landfall effects that generate more creatures for you to equip onto, like uh, Springheart Nantuko, Scoots Warm, or Bristly Bill, it can quickly get out of control, I think. This card's going to create a lot of really long turns, be a menace to play, and I don't find it particularly interesting in terms of identity, so 1 out of 5. Wow, the effect is pretty cool. Playing Nadu from the command zone might be too strong, but I would really like trying him out in my equipment decks or spells decks. There are probably really interesting ways to build Nadu that are also fun. I also really like Amonka as a set, and the art's quite pretty, so I'll give this 3 out of 5. What wisdoms is my guy holding? Look at him. He's a flying bird man. That's fire, dude. You gotta give him 5 out of 5. Easy. It would be unwise to give him anything less. Kudo. King among bears. Other creatures have base power and toughness 2-2 two -two and are bears in addition to other types. Clearly very good of Elish Norn. Not that inspiring though. 2 out of 5. I like Kudo. A very simple but easy to understand design that I appreciate in the format. I think you can also do some really funny stuff with him, so 3 out of 5. Yo, you gotta give my man kudos a 5 out of 5. He's a bear with a crown. He makes your other boys into bears. You know you can give others scores, right? I, I know, I know, but look at him. You gotta give him 5. Arna, whatever. Flying, lifelink, ward, wow, classic. And whenever a modified creature you control attacks, you double the number of each counter on it. Then you also make a copy of non-token permanents attached to it. Very clever use of modified as a mechanic. Adding the doubling of counters seems a bit too far, but an interesting option for Esper commanders who have been focused on auras and equipment lately. I give this 3 out of 5. This card's so cool. I can think of so many different ways to build it. I don't even know where to begin. I would definitely want to play a Leela in here to make more creatures, probably a Lion Sash, and even a Mondrak. What's the score, kid? Oh, 5 out of 5. This dude got an Energy Spear and a Bird Boy? If this isn't 5 out of 5 material, I don't know what is. Designer, don't look at me like that. You know this dude is cool. Okay, now tell me what it does. Shilgengar. A uh, demon that lets you sacrifice other creatures for a blood token, unless you sacrifice an angel, which then you make blood tokens equal to their toughness instead. If you crack six blood tokens, you return each creature card from your graveyard. Wow, okay, chill. With finality counters and their vampires. This guy's like a lot right now. The blood tokens let you passively pitch great reanimation targets as you play, and having enough creatures to sacrifice for the second ability does not seem difficult to execute especially in these colors. But I'm not really that interested in yet another aristocrat legend in Orzov, and pairing reanimation isn't that interesting, so two out of five. Oh, if only this was Esper, then I could play my new Mirko in here too. I think it's really interesting how you get to pull angels and vampires together in this deck, with the commander acting as a, as a glue for both themes together in a pretty cohesive way. So... I'll give this 4 out of 5. I would build this. Designer. Designer. My sire got wings. Designer. He got like a demon wing, an angel wing, a nice chair probably from the Ikeas. You gotta give him 5. Right? 5 out of 5. Harragast. 
He has a merge and lets you exile your hand to draw three. And also gives your other creature spells a merge equal to their mana cost. I don't believe we've seen a merge in recent sets, so good synergy with affinity creatures or other ways to cheat high value creatures onto the battlefield. So then you can emerge into other creatures you want to keep around. I'll give this 3 out of 5. I feel like this commander is pretty cool, but a little too one-dimensional for my taste. It's pretty clear how you're supposed to build it, so for that, I'll just give it 3 out of 5. Probably fun to play once or twice, but I wouldn't keep it around. Oharagast is my guy. He's like a dope dragon who lets all your creatures come out the butt. He's a butt dragon, and butt dragons get 5 out of 5. Ashling Flame Dancer. You don't lose unspent red mana as steps and faces end, and for Magecraft you get to loot, then your second spell Pyroclasms, and the third time you get four mana back. Wow, this is pretty neat. What a great way to bring back the Lorwyn elemental mechanics, but paired with the modern Magecraft. Letting you bank the mana you get off of Magecraft is also very interesting, so I'll actually give Ashling four out of five. I like this. Oh wow! You definitely want a Harmonic Prodigy in here. I like that even though it's spells focused, it doesn't dictate how you spend the red mana. So you could probably have some cool small spell stack that helps you ramp up to planeswalkers or big creatures or permanents. Really unique. 5 out of 5. Why they gotta put my girl on fire? They're a fire elemental. You, yeah, I know. But in this store, we respect our elementals and our women. 4 out of 5. Gotta respect them. God, there's so many legends in this set, they should call it Commander Horizons. No one's made that joke before. Uh, affinity for artifacts, you draw and lose life equal to number, half the number of artifacts you control, and you can fling artifacts. I don't know, just like read the card. One out of five. Not interesting. Oh, a Rakdos Affinity Commander. I bet you can make a really interesting artifacts deck. I definitely played Chiscoria here, and affinity creatures for you to fling. Three out of five. Dude, look at how excited my guy is to throw stuff. Gotta love someone with a passion. Five out of five. Easy. I don't understand you. Soren of House Markov. Christ, these cards have two sides now. Uh, Soren has lifelink, extort. Post-combat main phase, you flip if you gain three life, and he turns into a walker, whatever. I'm just... Here's the card, just like read it. Flip walkers are back. Uh, putting extort on a planeswalker is kind of interesting. I like how this commander plays with life, but not really anything too interesting in the space, so 2 out of 5. Oh cool, it's Soren! I think it's really funny how you get to flip him after you gain 3 life off a of food token. I like planeswalkers, and Soren has life gain, removal, and a way to steal a creature, so if you could get there, that would be pretty neat. 4 out of 5. I don't know why he looks so sad though. That's a nice looking banquet. You know what? Because he's sad, I'm gonna give him a 5 out of 5 to cheer him up. I got you, dude. Tamio, Inquisitive Student. You're not gonna read these cards anymore? Alright, let me read it for a sec. Uh, Tamio enables Mox Amber, gives you more sources to draw and to spend your mana, and can easily flip into a walker that helps suppress an aggressive opponent. I heard this card is playable in Murktide, so 5 out of 5. You can flip Tamio off a single Brainstorm. I like that Tamio's plus reduces all attacks on her, so it's easier to defend her in Commander. Adding a mana back from returning a spell seems cool. I like it. 4 out of 5. You gotta respect the uh, ac academies, academics. They are the ones who share the knowledge to society, so 5 out of 5. Ajani Nakal Pariah. You get 3 powers worth of creatures on 2 bodies for 2, and if the lower toughness one dies, this one flips into a planeswalker. Talk about pushed. I like that this card reminds me of a Johnny Vengeant, but I wish it destroyed lands. I guess it's fine. It makes more cats and grows your board. 3 out of 5. Wow, a Boros cat stack. I'm so used to seeing Celestia cat decks that having a Johnny in red white probably opens up a lot of options for you to brew with. You get to play War Leader's Call or even share animosity. 5 out of 5. Man, I heard about Ajani's story, and you know, you only got one brother in life. Like, I think to be able to capture this sense of undying brotherhood 
and the anger you feel from losing a loved one, that's peak magic right there. That's a 5 out of 5 for me. <laughs> oh cute, Philia. Another mono white blink legend, except this time it's a dog. Having flash is quite good, since you can save your own creatures. It's a cute dog, so if I don't give this a good score, I feel like the internet will be really angry at me. So, 3 out of 5, I guess. Philia's so cute! 5 out of 5. Dog. 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 Hear me out. 10 out of 5. Good boys deserve all the love. Eladamri Corvec doll. Eladamri's back. That's cool. I've seen this effect of peeking and casting creatures off the top from green before, uh, like Augur of Autumn or Vizier of the Menagerie. The second ability is most interesting, being able to tap your creatures to cheat in a creature off the top or from hand. Model green creature decks aren't that interesting to me overall. 2 out of 5. I like how Eladamri turns your creatures into a way to cheat stuff in. So if you have a way to untap Eladamri, I can see uh, where you can use something like Scroll Rack to stack the top of your deck and keep putting in big creatures again and again. I'll give him 4 out of 5. He got a cool sword, nice armor, I like my elves, so 5 out of 5. It's 6. This card's very powerful. I would play this in all my decks if I played Commander. Giving non-lamp permanence retrace just means all your draws are basically live, and you could probably do some interesting things with permanence that sacrifice themselves. 3 out of 5. Giving your things retrace is cool, but kind of reminds you of a green uh, Moldrotha. I would play 6 in most of my green decks because 6 can help me hit land drops, but not as a commander. So, 3 out of 5 for me. You gotta love nature. That's how we gonna save the planet, you know? 5 out of 5. Grist. Voracious Larva. Hmm. Larva Grist. That's neat. Interesting how Larva Grist would trigger the original Grist's ability as an insect. Kind of fitting for the concept of a swarm. The Planeswalker side being able to naturalize for a minus 2 loyalty is good. The last ability is very powerful if you can get to it. I like synergizing with graveyards and I like Grist, so... Uh, 3 out of 5. I think this card is pretty neat, but a little boring. I would like to play in a graveyard focused deck, but as a commander, I feel like you could already play the original Grist, so I don't see why you would play this one. 3 out of 5. I think it's super inspiring how this little bug guy can be a planeswalker, and I think that inspiration is worthy of a 5 out of 5. Roisin, Roaring Prophet. Oh, we're still going. Oh, Roisin's back. Turning Roisin into an X-Spell meta worker is kind of cool. Still, just a Grill Ramp deck, but cool card. Two out of five. I love big X-Spells decks. Roisin probably fits into a Timur X-Spell deck like Magus Lucia Kane, but you could also just make Roisin big spell singers or big creature spells. So, three out of five. Yo, why are you so angry, Roisin? Chill. Chill. Here's a 5 out of 5. We good, homie. Pearl Ear, Imperial Advisor. Equipment have affinity for auras. Weird. I've seen mono white equipment or aura commanders before, like SRAM or Light Paws. Combining both of them together, like Danitha, is just fine. 2 out of 5. I think this commander could be pretty strong. I like how your auras get cheaper thanks to equipment, so that dictates how you select cards for both types. You want equipment that are cheaper to cast as cost reducers, and for auras, you could probably pick some bigger ones as like a payoff. So I feel like this is pretty interesting to brew. 4 out of 5. Yo, my guy got 5 tails. 5 out of 5. Easy. It only makes sense. It only makes sense. Genku. I like this triggers off old Moonfolk cards. That's pretty funny. Another blue-white commander that rewards you for blinking things, except this time you get to build a board and grow it too. The versatility of the token types is meaningful and interesting, so some decisions there. 3 out of 5. I could see myself playing this. Wow, this is like a super token stack. If you get an Eldrazi Displacer, you can blink other token makers to trigger Genku. Having a Brago in this deck would be super powerful as well. I just love Kamigawa, so I'll give this 5 out of 5. 
they look like they're having a good time together. You got three moon dudes, you got the rat dudes, you got all the dudes. Five out of five for good times. Ulamog. Designer, can you sit in on this? I'm getting a little tired. You get to exile half of one person's library and it has Annihilator X? Oh, it's so hateful, I love it. Five out of five, exile Senpai's deck every time. Wow, this card's really mean. I guess it makes sense since it's 10 mana, but I don't know if I'll play this in my decks. This seems like one of the best finishers to cast in a while, so I'll give it three out of five. Spaghetti Boys? Always get five out of five from me. Spaghetti Boys represent spaghetti life. See, I got the shirt, spaghetti life. Flage, Titan of Fire's Fury. It's a lightning helix on a titan, five out of five. I thought they forgot about Flage, to be honest. As a commander, I'm not sure how interesting it is, but maybe if I put in a Torpor Orb, I can make a cool Voltron deck. I'll give it three out of five. Yo, this guy? Got no respects for the environment. You see how he burning up those trees like it's the Amazon? Nah, I don't mess with that. Four out of five. Ral, Monsoon Mage. I hate coin flipping, but reducing the casting cost of spells is pretty good for two mana, and flipping into a walker should be pretty easy. You get to choose when you want to flip into Ral as well. Then this matters because Ral enters with additional counters for each instant and sorcery spell you cast. I would only ever try to go for the minus eight, which is quite strong in storm decks. Three out of five. Cool card. Trying to capture their spark through a loss of a relationship with coin flipping is such a cool idea. So I really love this card, five out of five. That's a nice jacket, five out of five. Emrakul, the world anew. The fact that you steal everything from one player for six off madness is quite surprising. Like usual, Emrakul has protection from a lot of things. I guess I'm just kind of tired of seeing Emrakul now, so two out of five. Another Emrakul? I guess it's nicer than controlling a player. I can see this card being really strong against specific creature-based commanders. So if you want a good way to shut off those decks outside of playing Wraths, maybe this card is for you. I'll give it a 3 out of 5. I like the purple color. I like how Emmy's got that garlic-shaped head. So 5 out of 5. It's another Kozilek. This is such an interesting card. I like that you're able to manifest two cards from two players, and the manifested creatures you have are stronger. So strategically, you can leverage the manifest to rip an opponent's hand apart if that matters, or target yourself to turn those cards into pressure. At 9 mana, probably quite hard to cast in commander, but I do like the design, so I'll give this 3 out of 5. Wow, this card's really powerful. I would probably play Kozilex in other decks as a bomb creature and not a commander. 3 out of 5 for me. Yo, is that blades on my man's Kozilex wrist? That's super cool. 5 out of 5 for cool wrist blades. This dude's a common, whatever, Skoa. This is a common, 0 out of 5. I really want to make Grandu a working commander. Maybe if I clone it and then bounce it back somehow. I'll give this one out of five. Skoa's got like mad gumption to stand next to a volcano like that, but kind of dangerous. So four, four out of five for having stupid ideas. Sorry, Skoa. Safety first. 